and I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shall thy trust in his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor from the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the the destruction that wastes at the noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thy behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy inhabitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and otter, and the young lion and the dragon shall thy trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall come upon me and I will answer him. He will be with, he, <clears throat> I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Kind Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you honor and glory on tonight because you are God. And you are God alone and there is none other like you. There is none other like you, Father, and for that we are grateful. Father, we are grateful because of your great love that you have towards your people. That you loved us so much that you gave your son to die for us and to reconcile our relationship so that we would have the privilege and the honor to stand before you, to beseech your throne, to make our requests be made known unto you. And we are grateful grateful. We are grateful for the sacrifice of love that you give to us each and every day, that you have woken us on this morning, that we have our right minds, that we have health and strength, that we are energized and focused on you, oh God, that we have the capacity to praise you, to give you honor, to give you glory, and we celebrate you on that for today, oh God. We celebrate you, oh God, because you did it again, oh God. You have kept us and you have satisfied us with life again on today, oh God. Father, we thank you that you have already gone ahead of us on this day. You have made every crooked place straight. You have made the rough places smooth. You have even given us doors of opportunity that no man can close. Father, I thank you that you are crowning us with your wisdom, that in your wisdom, oh God, we are also obtaining understanding, oh God. Father, I thank you for your word, which has been a lamp unto our feet and a guide unto our path. It is our light, oh God. It is what we live by. We eat your word. We speak your word. We meditate on your word. We dwell in your word, oh God, and for that we are grateful. We are grateful that you are giving us an understanding of your word, that you are giving us the capacity to apply your word to our lives, that we might walk it out each and every day, oh God. Father, we desire to be pleasing in your sight. We desire to do your will, oh God. We desire to lie in your inhabitation, oh God. We desire for you to be a part of our life. We thank you for the comforter that you have given us in the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us, that he is a paraclete. He is our teacher. He is here to assist us. He leads us into truth. He leads us into the places of righteousness. He leads us into places of deliverance. He leads us into places of healing. He leads our speech. He leads our thought life. He leads us away from temptation, oh God. He del helps deliver us from all evil, and for that we are thankful. We thank you, oh Lord, that the 
Holy Spirit is also a comforter, that he comes to take care of us when we have situations and circumstances, that he brings forth peace, that he brings forth comfort, that he brings forth an uh, opportunity for us to rest in you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, that you have already prepared a place for us, and that in you and in your kingdom, there is a resting place, and we have a place where we can rest our weary hearts, that we can rest our minds, where we can rest rest from worry, that we can rest from strife, that Lord, we don't have to do it within ourselves, but we have been empowered by your spirit to overcome every circumstance. Father, I thank you that you have gave, given us all a made up mind to serve you and that we won't turn back, that our hands are our hands are on the plow and we are focused that we will not turn to the left or to the right, but we will remain on the narrow path of righteousness. Father, I thank you that you have equipped us. You have equipped us in order to do a great work in your kingdom, oh God. Father, I thank you that you have equipped us with knowledge. You have equipped us with understanding, that you have equipped us with witty ideas, that you have given us creative minds and creative hearts, and we have the ability to do anything for in you there is nothing that is impossible for us and that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us so I thank you oh God that we are empowered to do a great work for you and your kingdom oh God you said in your word that the harvest was plenteous but the laborers are few so you have already equipped us to be laborers in your vineyard oh God that as we go forth and we labor oh God that souls will be drawn back to you oh God you said Said that if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you, O oh God. So I thank you, O oh God, that you have given us courage, that you have empowered us to lift your name high, that we walk about our day and we decree and we declare the good works of the Lord. We declare every good thing that you have done for us. You said in your word that we are overcome by the word of our testimony, O oh God. So I thank you, O oh God, that you have empowered us and encouraged us to share our testimony with others, oh God, that you have shared, our, we share our, our testimonies of deliverance, that we share our testimonies of reconciliation, that we share our testimony of healing, that we share our testimonies of great financial blessings, that we share our testimonies of the new job, we share our testimony of new homes, we share our testimonies of our uh, lost children being found. We share our testimony of reconciled marriages. We share our testimony of reconciled families. We share our testimony of reconciled friendships, oh God. Father, I thank you that there is nothing that is too hard for you, that we have done no thing that will ever take your love away from us. We are so grateful for your faithfulness towards us, that you are the same God today as you were on yesterday, and you change not that you will forever be with us and you will continue to send us out grace each and every day that we have new mercy that we have new grace that we have a fresh opportunity to do your will God and we are grateful we are grateful oh God that you are continuously with us and that you dwell with us all day long and that you think of us more than we can even think of ourselves father I thank you that you have given us a mind to seek you out in your word, oh God, that we can become familiar with you, oh God, that we become familiar with your voice, that when we hear you, we respond and we answer, Father. Father, I thank you that you have given us a commitment to your word, oh God, and that in that commitment to your word, oh God, we desire to please you, God, so we love you with our whole hearts, oh God, with our whole mind and with everything that we have in our soul, but more importantly, oh God, we have love for our neighbor that we love our brothers and sisters. Why? Because, Father, you said if we love our brothers and sisters, others will know that we are your disciples. And as we are your disciples, oh God, that they will see that your word is true, that they will see that you are indeed a promise-keeping God, that they will see that there is a genuine love out there that accepts them in spite of anything that they may have done, that there is nothing that is too hard for you to forgive, that there is nothing that you cannot hear 
heal from. There is nothing that you will not deliver us from, oh God. So when we fall into temptation, when we fall into trials and tests that we did not plan, oh God, we will continue to give your name glory. We will continue to praise you. We will continue to offer sacrifices of praises unto you because you are God. And we know that it is for your purpose and it is for your plan and that it may not be about us, but it may be about the loss, oh God. Father, I thank you for bringing back wayward mothers. I thank you for bringing back wayward fathers, God. I thank you for bringing back absent loved ones, God. I thank you for protecting the runaway on today, oh God. I thank you that you're protecting them from pimps and from hustlers and from circumstances that they have no idea that they're entering into, oh God. I thank you that you are protecting them from a life of crime and that you are giving them a heart to go back home. I thank you for their parents, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that the parents are continuing to pray for them and to cover them, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you are rescuing them, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you are setting them free, that you are reconciling the hurt, that you are reconciling the pain, oh God. I thank you for the anointed, consecrated laborers that you are sending in the path of the runaway right now, God. I thank you that you are arresting their heart, God. I thank you that they are not in a place of fear, oh God, but they will be in a place where they can be comforted. I thank you, oh God, that you can fix these situations, God, with our young people, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you can give them a heart that panteth after you, just as the deer panteth after the water, oh God. And I thank you that you will fulfill their desires, oh Lord, that you will give them homes that are safe, God, that you will provide them with a warm bed, oh God, and perhaps even their own room or whatever it is that is necessary, oh God, for them to feel like they are loved, God. I thank you, oh God, for the social workers who work with these young people each and every day. I thank you, oh God, for the programming that exists. I thank you, oh God, that they are going to find a refuge and a hiding place, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you are the one who has been protecting them and that you will continue to protect them, God. I even thank you for their influential friends, oh God, classmates who may already know you. I thank you, oh God, that you have given them the spirit of prayer and that they are covering their friends, oh God, and that they are also having the courage to offer Christ to them, oh God. I thank you that they have a warm heart to receive you, oh God, that they will receive Christ in their heart, oh God, so that they will not have to continue to live this dangerous life, God. I thank you, oh God, that you have continued to protect our children and our youth from hurt, harm, or danger. Father, I ask that you cover all of the parents in Tennessee right now, God. I thank you, oh God, that you are covering their grieved hearts, God, those who lost loved ones on this week, oh God. I thank you for moving on their behalf, oh Lord. I thank you, oh God, for giving them comfort to know that it was beyond their control, oh God. I thank you for giving them to know that you do all things well, that you do not make mistakes, oh God. And even though they don't understand it now, oh God, it will be for your glory in the end, God. I thank you, oh God, that you are meeting every financial need of every family that was impacted in this situation, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you are sending a massive support system to that community right now, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that the children will not be traumatized, oh God, that you will find a way for them to experience your grace in a new way, oh God, and that they will be confident to go to school, that they will be confident that your angels are encamped around about them, oh God. I thank you even, God, for continuing to protect the children that have been impacted by gun violence in the past in other cities in other communities, oh God. Continue to heal their hearts, oh God. Continue to give them courage, oh God. Continue to give them great faith in you, oh God, that you are able to protect, that you are able to keep them from hurt, harm, or danger. I thank you, oh God, that even as they travel to and from school, oh God, that you're protecting them on the buses, that you are protecting them in their parents' cars, God, that there is no accidents, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for everything that you are doing in the lives of young people, God. I thank you, oh God, that they are gaining an opportunity to know that you are indeed real, to know that you are the Lord God that protects them, that loves them, oh God. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, that you are continuing to move on those families and in that community, oh Lord. Father, I even thank you for 
<clears throat> the governmental system, God, that there will be things put in place, oh God, to protect our young people. I thank you for those who sit on the school boards, God. I thank you, oh God, for all of the systems that they already have in place and all of the security protocol that probably protected the lives of many other oh god i am grateful we are grateful to you that you have protected our children that you have protected this community oh god and we are thankful oh god that you are sending and meeting all the needs of those who are in tennessee oh god in the name of jesus i thank you and i give you praise and i give you honor and i give you glory i thank you for the churches standing up and being the church that we begin to pray over our communities that we pray ahead of your protection each and every day oh god i thank you oh god for Hallelujah. moving in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for all these things in jesus name thank god amen hallelujah Hallelujah. We would like to thank everyone in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us through social media. We would like to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. My name is Minister Terry Shumpert and I am a humble servant of Pastor Timothy R. Stokes and Pastor Tanya C. Stokes. I am a son who has been here since the inception of the ministry. And now I'm back in the house and for just two seconds, if y'all can just give me two, I only want two. Put your hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our majestic Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You can take your, you can take your seats. Keep that, that fervency right there. Um, Y'all, I'm just, I'm home, man. And there is no place like home. I, I know they said it in Dorothy and Winters of Oz, and, but listen, it's when you, you embark on a journey and you go away, it's certain comforts that you can't get when you come back home. Uh, come on with me, somebody. I couldn't get Big John's where I was at. Uh, I couldn't get a Kogel hot dog where I was at. So, mm, it's just something about being home. Amen? I'm going to begin to minister a word that the Lord has gave me for this local assembly. And I'm just going to pray and we're going to attack it. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I decrease that you can increase, God. I pray that you fill me and use me as an oracle of God, God. I pray, God, that my word to God that I speak, God, will come from the throne room of you and that you, God, would bless it, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, we have been on a journey of wisdom, and we're going to continue on that vein. The word that I'm going to speak on tonight is wisdom in serving a servant's heart. I'm going to say that again. Wisdom in serving a servant's heart. Proverbs 7 and 4 says, say unto wisdom, you are my sister. It says, call understanding thy kinsman. Something that's interesting to me with wisdom is that wisdom is likened unto a woman. Now, uh, stay with me for a minute. Uh, I just like to ask God's questions sometimes. I say, God, why would you like wisdom to a woman? And the first thing came to my mind was because men like women. Come on, somebody. But that wasn't enough for me. That wasn't enough for me. I needed a little more. So uh, I said, you know, he said wisdom cries in the streets. He says she's in a chief consort. He says wisdom is everywhere. But I couldn't get on why he called wisdom a woman. And then he was like, let me help you, son. The Greek word for wisdom is Sophia. 
Sophia is a woman. Come on, somebody. That's just how we're going to kick it off. If you have your Biblos tonight, please open it up to the book of Philippians chapter 2. And we are going to start this journey. My Bible says, and I'm reading from the King James, we're going to start at verse 2. We're going to go down to about um, 8, maybe touch on 13. We'll see what the Lord does. It says, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy. That ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Somebody say one mind. He's going to admonish us something right here, and I'm going to sit on this for a minute, but not right now. He says, let nothing, and again, I'm going to say, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let us esteem Others better than ourselves. Wow. That right there are preached, but that ain't what I'm talking about. Verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Where I really wanted to get to verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, which was in Christos, the anointed one, the Messiah, the promised deliverer. Let let, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Who being in the form of God, he was deity, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Verse 8, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death of the cross. And then I want to jump down to verse 13. It says, for it is God which worketh in you to will and to do his good pleasure. It's my custom as I begin to bring the word, I like to bring the history of who's speaking. Paul is speaking here right now, and Paul is one of the greatest apostles to ever do it in the Bible. Thirteen, some theologians say 14 books have the New Testament is attributed to Paul. I like Paul because I like his conversion. We know the story about his road to Damascus. We know that he had a hand in stoning Stephen. He was there literally stoning a man, y'all, who was full of wisdom, a good report, and full of the Holy Ghost. He took care of the wisdom. I mean, he took care of the widows who were being neglected. This man stoned him. He he was just like Jesus. He stoned him, y'all. And this just kills me that this is who wrote this book. He had license to put people in prison if you believed in Jesus. Now, I don't know about y'all, but uh, I can find myself in this book. I tell people this. I said, Mr. Paul, his name was Saul first. Uh, He was the biggest hater in the Bible, literally. That's what he was doing. He was hating on Christians. He was tearing them up. He was putting them in prison. And I said, well, let me look at this man. Let me look at this man and how he addresses this. This epistle here is known as the epistle of joy. Now, in Philippi, there was no church. Paul established this church, okay? So this is the first church that Paul goes in to establish here. And he goes on and he says some things. But I love him. If you go back and you look just a book over in in, in one and one, he says this. He says, I, Paul, the servant of Jesus Christ. I like it how he really breaks it down and he says it like this. He always identifies his call in Romans One and one, he says, I am the servant 
of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God. He said, I am separated for this good message. That word there, good message, is you and galan. That means to spread the good news in the Greek. Paul never identifies his calling. He never walked around and said, I'm Apostle Paul. No, 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 look in the book. I'm in the book. He always identifies himself as a slave. That Greek word there is doulos, a slave to Jesus Christ. But look at his background, y'all. He hated the church. Uh, don't look at me twisted, but some of y'all hate coming to church sometimes. Some of y'all would much rather watch the final four, uh, go out to wings and have that thing, uh, be on vacation. Stop me when I stop telling the truth. But we got to take on the form of a servant. Oh my God. The Bible also talks about Paul, about him making havoc of the church. He made havoc. Listen, it's people out in the city where you live at, not necessarily Flint, but I'm speaking to the nations right now. They're speak, wreaking havoc on the gospel. And the only way it's going to change is the body of Christ takes on the form of a servant. Amen? Look at this in 2 and 7. It says, he said he made himself of no reputation. Let's just stop right there. <laughs> now, I don't know y'all, but I was born and raised in this place called Flint, Michigan. You have to be hard to stay in Flint, Michigan. Flint literally is a rock. It starts fires. And I've seen many fires in my 56 years of living. So you had to establish your rep here. Uh, if you get outside the city limits, you know, like to Beecher, where they call them, Bucktown. Bucktown had they thing. The North Side had they thing. The South Siders had they thing. The West Side. You had to have a reputation. It took years for me to establish my rep. But the Bible says here that we are not to take a reputation. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. You got to change your thinking. And this is what this book does. Uh, let me just go back over one more page, and, and I want to show you something quickly. It says here in 2 and 2, it says that be like-minded. Remember that. Be like-minded. Go down. One accord. Be one mind. B, verse 3, lowliness in mind. Let every man not look on his own things. Let five, this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Paul is dealing with your psychic. <laughs> He's dealing with your conscience. He's telling you that you have to literally change your perception of how you see. Oh, y'all are not with me, but it's okay because I got an amen behind me. I say it like this. I got to lose me for Jesus to use me. Oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I have to lose me so he can use me. Uh, let's continue to massage this text. Uh, Jesus said it like this. He said, listen, uh, Father, if you're willing, uh, take this cup uh, away from me, but nevertheless, uh, not my will, but your will be done. Watch this. Watch y'all. I'm going to use myself for an example because I like to preach through the word and through example, okay? I uh, had some problems. Uh, I went bankrupt before I left here. It was an ugly situation for me, y'all. I didn't have a job. It was just ugly, and I just, I didn't see a way out. 
And the Lord was like, you know what? You got to get up out of here. And I had to go. And I went on a journey, y'all. It was a journey. It was a beautiful journey. And I said this. And I have my friends. It's beautiful to see y'all clays. I have my partner over there, Carl Arthur, Pastor Carl Arthur, and Mom Mariah is in the house with me. It's just good to have family, y'all. And they come back and gather. That's just a beautiful thing to me that our connections are just ever-ending. But that's a sidebar, but let me continue. Um, uh, here we are, y'all. I went on this journey, y'all, and, and I said, I never, I repeat, my witness is back there. I said, I'm never coming back. I come visit. I come run the crim. But to come back to Flint, Michigan? No, nah, that, that, that ain't me. I said that to say this. Don't never say never. You have to submit to God. And that's what I'm doing now. And when I tell y'all my life is blessed, it's tremendous in the midst of what I've been through, which that's going to remain nameless, God is still blessing me and he has his hand on me. And that's just awesome to me. Let's continue in the text. Watch this, y'all. It says in 2 and 7 again, pick this up one more time. Again, we're working on this mind because we got to change our mindset. He said, we just heard him say no reputation. Now it says he took the form of a servant. That word form there is the Greek word morphe or where we get metamorphosis from. You literally have to act like you are that caterpillar that's getting ready to get in that cocoon and let God make you and mold you and twist you so you'll come out and be a wonderful butterfly, something that everybody wants to look at because it's so beautiful. Blessed are those feet of those who speak the gospel. Listen, when you get in that place and let God make you and mold you and break you and you get a fire on you and a holy indignation, people will come from miles around to see you speak. They'll see you speak to atmospheres, to ionospheres, prophesy life. You'll speak the you'll speak wisdom why because you set yourself on him you're not looking to nothing enough but to be a slave now this right here this word slave this word slave is means that you have no rights you get paid uh, no wages that's what Christ says you are to be, a slave. He says that you are to treat others higher than you would treat yourselves. You got to esteem others higher than you would esteem yourselves. That right there is something where we have to totally surrender to him. I was messing with my best friend and he did his DNA through ancestry. And I was talking to Pastor Tanya about this also. And I said, this hurts me, and it's going to hurt some of y'all, but don't shoot the messenger. It's okay, okay? All right, all right, because I'm a person. I got guns, too, so you probably don't want to shoot with me because i am got some, too. Anyways, just clowning a little bit. The Bible says a merry heart do a good life medicine. Can I act a fool because I'm home? Come on, somebody. Anyways, this slurvent, he has no rights. But he's also a person who's a worshiper. He's a worshiper totally submitted to God. Now, this is what I was talking about, the ancestry, when we was talking to Carl. We all, if we look back three and four generations, we got some slavery in us, y'all. Go back. Go check your DNA. And you know what? I thought this was just remarkable to me, the Emancipation Proclamation that Abraham Lincoln signed in 1863 to free us, that you ain't got no more slave. I thought that was interesting, y'all, that a man whose name Abraham, come on, y'all, go back to the Bible, Abraham freed us from slavery. I thought that was deep. 
because God will go and make man, a regular man, give him a biblical name who has biblical terminology. And because when you name your children, y'all, name your children for purpose. That's why they named him Abraham, Lincoln, because he freed us. But that broke us, y'all, because we don't want to be slaves. We do not want to be slaves. I'm free. I it's not going over that no more. I it's not, I it's not. Excuse my Ebonics, but again, I'm at home. If I can't act a fool here, I don't know where I can act a fool. Come on, somebody. We literally have to go back to slavery. Now we got new liberty because our slavery is unto God. It ain't under, we got different masters that's ruling us and whooping us like the book of Roops with Alex Haley. Come on, somebody. Let's keep working the text. Two and eight, it says that he humbled himself and became obedient until the death, even the death, death of the cross. Look at this, y'all. Jesus took off deity. He took off who he was. He took off all of his glory, his splendor, and put on a man's body. Now, I pose to y'all this question. If the king of kings can take off and strip himself of his deity and take on the form of a servant and humble himself, what more should you do? It's no more than our duty. Listen, again, I remember I told you you had to have a rep if you're going to stay in flame. Man, throw your rep out the window. Throw who you are out the window. Throw your vision out the window and submit to another person's. That which you will make happen for another person, God will make happen for you. Be faithful over the little things, and he will give you many things. Uh, I know, I know, I know. What we have to do is we've got to get low, y'all. That word humble there, it comes from the Greek word tapaneo. And it literally means to bring one's pride and to be ranked below others who are honored or rewarded. Break your pride. Pride goes before a fall. Listen, I don't want nothing associated with pride in my life. I'm dying every day like Paul said, y'all. I don't have a life. I literally don't. My life is Jesus' life. But what we have to do, we have to get so in tune to the point where he increases and I decrease. We have to learn how to walk and listen. That's why we have two ears. Because listen, y'all, it's a lot of people out here suffering. It's a lot of people going through things. And what you have to do, you can't put your personal situation above somebody else's. You got to lay your life down. Take up that cross and follow him. Listen, y'all, we got situations right now in this local assembly. People didn't lost loved ones. They're going through different things. And you know what we do? Well, I got this going on over here too. I got this. Uh, Jesus took off deity. Take off your problems and take somebody else's. If you want to see the church grow, you want to see us expand in growth, people don't care what you know. They want to know how much you care. We got to start laying down, y'all. We got to get low. That's where it's at. Listen, I believe this prophetically. If we ever, as a community, would come together and gather and don't care who gets the allocates of who put it together, we could take this city over. If we got another church and another church and another church and us to come together, 
and begin to offer up prayers and intercession and don't care who gets the glory. If we can have a New Testament church like the book of Acts where they went house to house breaking bread and God added to them, they did not care. And he added 3,000 souls and the church grew immensely. I mean, just so great. It was crazy. We can get there. But what is it going to take? Laying your life down. It's going to take tearing down pride. You got to let pride go. Verse 8. Go down. It said he became obedient. <laughs> obedient to the death, even into the cross. <sighs> Obedience is better than sacrifice, y'all. We got to obey. How many times have you found yourself getting up at 1230 and you're like, oh, man, I think it's just I got to go to the bathroom. I got to do this. Mm -mm. How many times you getting up at repeatedly at two o'clock in the morning and wonder, oh, I just can't sleep. Ask the young prophet Samuel. He got called four times before he realized it was the voice of God. He was serving Eli. His job was to open the doors of the house of the God. Because the Bible says in that time, there was no open vision. God wasn't speaking. But he made sure he started to speak to the young prophet Samuel. Y'all, we just got to open up our ears and hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say unto the church. Because he's speaking. We have to look at the times and the seasons that's going on right now. Let me help you if you don't know. Jesus can come back right now as I'm preaching and take us all the glory. We're that close. I say, I know no man knows the day or the hour because he comes like a thief in the night. We don't know when he's coming. But he says, watch and pray. And make sure it ain't in Flint, Michigan, because he says in the winter. They come in the winter. <laughs> come on, somebody. I'm in the book. I am in the book. Watch this, y'all. I'm almost done. It's 26. I got time. I'm doing great. He says this. He says that to will in 13. Let's read it. It says, for it is God which worketh in you to will and to do his good pleasure. Well, what is his good pleasure? What is his will for me? Well, I'm going to show you with my little points what it is, what that will is and what his good pleasure is. I'm going to reveal it to you. But what's amazing to me is this. To will means God is extending his best offer to birth faith in people to empower them to manifest his presence. That means God has a hand extended to give you power to manifest his presence. Well, manifest his presence in what? Whatever you need. Oh, am I looking for my business to expand? Yes, walk out by faith. Did God say, hey, I'm supposed to have this business and people are going to come to me? Yes. Get on the internet and start researching and starting it now. There's so much wealth in this house right now that I'm speaking. It's millions of dollars that's just sitting out here. But you're sitting on it. God says begin to act on it. He says to do. That word to do means like a wire bringing power to those lights up there. Do you know the wattage that's coming out of that light? I can't even look at that light that's blinding me right now. That's the type of light God wants us to have everywhere we go. When you go on your job, when you go into the grocery store, you're supposed to have that type of watch going out. And people are supposed to see your light and just be gone because they can't take it. What's funny to me, when I go into venues and places, and people be like, oh, that's the preacher right there. And I'd be laughing at it. I'd be like, okay, okay. 
Renee's like, you can't cuss around him. I say, don't ever give me that kind of uh, 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 allocates or nothing. Cuss, Peter. Go on be Peter if you want to. <laughs> be Peter, cuss them out. That such and such, coke crock three times, Peter. But you know what? While we laughing, I can use a Peter. Yep, I can use a Peter for ministry because you know what? He ain't scared to speak what's on his cotton pick in mind. And God is raising Peters up in this season. Quit looking at people's outward appearance. Look on their heart. I don't know why I'm going there, but I, it's him. It's him. Uh, I want to show you something. This first call of servanthood. Turn to Jeremiah 33. And I'm just going to be a couple more spots and then we're done. I don't, I don't like to have y'all turning and going different spots and all that. But you know what's so nice that y'all got your dog on um, phones and all y'all got to do is say, hey, Jeremiah 33 and 3 is where he's going. Get there. That is so wonderful. Technology is so nice. But Terry Shepard is old school. Bring the word with me. I don't want no computers. I don't want no crashes. I don't want nothing. I want the lagos before me. And it's just me. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Please hear what I'm saying. I don't want nobody getting convicted or nothing like that. I'm just saying for me, just like I want this right here, this steel, I want this steel in my hand. I don't like the hand held like Janet Jackson. I want the steel because it's something because I could use my hands. It's just, I'm just showing y'all a flavor, y'all, that God can use anybody. If he's doing it with me, y'all out there, y'all can do the same thing. You can be called to five-fold ministry. You can preach. You can be deacons. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But let's look at this. The first call, if you're a servant, is the call to prayer. Jeremiah 33 and 3 reads it like this. It says, call unto me and I will answer. All you got to do is call, the Bible says. You ain't got to be long. You ain't got to go through no hickam or shires. All. It says, call. Get on the phone. Get on your Apple. Get on your Android. Call. Lift up your voice. Call unto me and I will answer thee. He didn't say he gonna take 24 hours. He didn't say he gonna take seven, two hours because our time is not his time. Our thoughts isn't his thoughts, neither are our ways his way. Just keep calling until he answers. He says, and uh, I'm gonna show thee <laughs> great <laughs> and uh, mighty things which thou knowest not. That right there hurts me. That means anytime I call, anytime I have a need, he's going to show me great and mighty things. Not mediocre, not subservient. He's going to show me great and mighty things. Because I serve the king of kings. I serve a big God. He's global. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. There's nothing he can't do. Nothing is impossible with him. Oh, if we would just call on the name of Jesus, y'all. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. It says to give thanks because this is the will of God. Call, pray, and thank. This is the will of God. Pray without ceasing. This is the will of God. He goes on to talk about if my people. He didn't say the people in the world. He said if my people, church goers, called by my name, would humble themselves. Oh, my God, we're in this humbling. We're in this humbling. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways, and I would hear. Now I'm hearing. I'm hearing from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. The land we're in right now is reprobate. We don't even know if you're walking about, if that's a, there we go right there, okay? Um, we got to open our eyes to the timing of seasons, y'all. The world is controlled by the enemy. We're wrestling against principalities, against rulers of darkness. Open your eyes and see the rulers of darkness. They're everywhere. 
They're multiplying. But thank God for Jesus. <laughs> thank God that he was the propitiation for our sins and that we are no longer under a curse. We can't be cursed, y'all, because of what Jesus did. And I got to piggyback on Pastor Dotson. He said something about Dr. Driver, y'all. If you did not get a chance to be a part of that, get the DVD or the tape of how we're doing it. This woman literally changed my perception like Dotson's, Pastor Dotson. It's certain things now, I make sure that I got to go seven times and search them before I come up and open my mouth. Because I want to be doctrinally sound on everything I do. And that woman opened my eyes. And then y'all you, got to think, when they come back, y'all thank Pastor Tanya. She is pinpoint on bringing people in here to bless us, to prepare us for the end times. Bless her, y'all. Let her know, Pastor Tanya, uh, uh, dap her up. Tell her, hey, I... Do you know what Pastor Tanya, because you did that, something hitting different in my life. I got five minutes. I got to close this thing out. I got to close this thing out. I got to close this thing out. Uh, number two point, if you're a servant, you have to develop your passion, your calling, your wherewithal, what God called you to do. Now, Am I saying that everyone is called to five-fold ministry? No, I am not saying that, okay? There's some deacons, there's helps, there's different types of ministries, okay? But what you want to do is, is engage in your passion and begin to develop yourself. That's what I do. I have a library, I'm mad, but my house getting ready to come. And all my library is in storage, so I'm like, man... Ooh, if I could have my stuff, mm, this would have been a little bit different. But he was like, son, don't worry about it. I've been put this in you a long time ago, so don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you what to say and how to do it. So don't worry about it. I'm going to get you back on the background. Don't worry about it, Sean. I'd be like, thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, he got me like that. I'm his friend. Huh? He said he don't do nothing unless he first reveal his secret to his servants, the prophets. I'm in the book. What we have to do, y'all, is develop our giftings, y'all. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. So you have a gift. Now let me help you. Don't ever try to be like somebody else. God needs your uniqueness. I tell people this all the time, and I'm going to stand by it. Two things. I believe God in his last days is raising up specialists. You're going to get something and God is going to cause you to concentrate on one thing. And that's going to be what you're called to do in the body of Christ. Right now, my area right now, I know I'm still going to do something in the area of working out because that's who I am. But he's raising me up to have a voice in this prophetic venue. And y'all will see it coming some days hence. I believe he's actually giving me some things in the prophetic that's going to be profound. I really believe that. So what you want to do is... Find you. And then give yourself to it. I got to tell y'all something right quick. I got three minutes. I'm almost done. I've been gone for a while. And listen, to come back here, and I'm just going to be honest, y'all. That man right there, Pastor Hodo, this man has went to a whole nother playing field. A whole nother. Y'all don't understand when he first came here, where he was at. And what he's been through, and now this man pastoring, revelating, got a word. And y'all know something? He funny. He telling jokes now. That shows me the power of God. But he's being him. And that's when I'm cautioning everybody in the body in this local house. Be you. Do you. God got a spot for you in here. It's going to fit our vision. Amen. And the last thing I'm closing right here, y'all got two minutes and I can close it up. Listen to this, y'all. One thing you have to do when you're serving, you got to have the right attitude. Listen, your attitude will control your altitude on how high you're going to go. I'm going to say that one more time. Your attitude will control your altitude on how high you want to go. I'm going to close the story right here. Martha, 
She was working so hard and complaining. It's like Mary over there sitting at the feet of Jesus. Why is she doing all of that? And I'm doing all this work and you don't see me. He said, sister, daughter, hush. She's doing what she's called to do. See, serving gifts, we get caught up and we like to do a whole lot, y'all. We always want to serve because can't nobody do it like us. Uh, I, I got to be here to open it up. I got to be here to close that. Quit that foolishness. Let's start raising up servants so we ain't got to do all the work and be struggling. Amen? Hallelujah. Did you get something out of this tonight? I'm going to pray. <laughs> Maybe there's someone in the sound of my voice who don't know Jesus Christ. I want to thank you right now for you tuning in, and I want to pray this prayer for you. I want you to say, Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I accept your son. He died and he rose for me on the third day, and right now, because of that, I'm saved. I thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer out on Facebook or YouTube, I want you to get in the chat and right there, and somebody is going to come on and they're going to contact you. One more thing while we're closing out and we're moving on to our, our groups. I want to issue a challenge to the city of Flint. I challenge you to come and gather with us in this local assembly. We have prayer on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. Come. I don't care if you go to this church. I don't care if you're a part of this church. You don't have to come and stay for the service. But I want to challenge you to come to this prayer and help us bombard heaven that can produce change in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, that's it, y'all. I'm done. Um, we got to do offering. Am I doing offering or somebody else doing offering? Oh, I'm doing offering. Listen, let's prepare our hearts to give. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. And it's another part I didn't get to, but to be a servant, you got to give too, y'all. But I didn't get to that because we give her, so that's why I didn't touch it. But I should have got with it for the world, and I didn't. I'm sorry. God, blame it on my head, not my heart. Fill that envelope out. If you're making a check, make it payable with the Family Worship Center Church. You know how to give. We look here through PayPal. You can give at fwccflint.org, cash app, uh, dollar sign, fwcci.flint. If you're going to mail it, 3280 Linden Road, or you can text FWCC Give to 888-364-4483. And if you're writing a check, that's M-I-L-L-I-O-N, million. Go ahead and give it in the deposit to our check, and we'll put it in and make sure that people will take care of it. Amen? Are you ready to give? Lift that offering up towards heaven. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank those who gave mine and those who didn't have to give, God. I pray that you would bless this seed, God. You said that you love a cheerful giver, God. We thank you for it, God, that all is being met in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. While they're going, I'm going to keep going and read the announcements. Amen. We're just going to keep flowing, and y'all going to be dismissed to y'all groups. This holy week begins Sunday. Don't forget. Best gift seed offering is coming April the 2nd. Come on, y'all. We just had a week right here where we had an extra week, an extra check, y'all. Bring that extra check and watch God open the windows of heaven for you if you would come sow that in at that seed time. This is a time of seed that we plant a financial seed that goes towards special projects for the year. Prepare your hearts to sow into the ministry with your best gift. On Wednesday, April the 5th, evening service will be virtual only. Please remember that on Wednesday, April the 5th, evening service will be virtual only. Join us on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Our breakout discussions will begin immediately and follow on Zoom. There is no in-person service that day. On Friday, April 7th, Good Friday service, worship encounter begins at 7 p.m. Please invite a friend and come out. Our special guest will be Psalmist Adrian Batson from the Fivefold Ministry Christian Center. Resurrection Sunday is April 9th. Please invite someone out. This is the time where normally this is our biggest increase, and God wants to save some people at this altar. We've been praying for this altar. If you got some people you know, Get them to church for Easter on um, Resurrection Sunday. Our theme for this year is Mercy at the Cross. Join us for the blessed service as we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. WWW is hosting our 10th anniversary mother-daughter luncheon on Saturday, May 13th at 11 o'clock. We are excited about resuming this yearly event at WFDC, C, FWCC, and the cost will be $30 a person. All righty, stand to your feet. Hopefully, you were blessed. 
Hopefully y'all will have some questions in your groups and I will see y'all next time. And it is my pleasure to serve you guys. And I'm here to serve. So if you need something, please call me. Be blessed.